In these next few videos, we'll learn about affine subspaces, affine combinations, and affine transformations, which are very slight generalizations of linear transformations, as we'll see. So the first definition that we'll need is what an affine combination of vectors is. So, but to do that, we'll recall what a linear combination is. So a linear combination of vectors v1 through vk in Rn is a combination of the form lambda 1 v1. So we add up all our vectors with some weights, and these weights we'll take to be real numbers. So that's what a linear combination is. And closely related to this, an affine combination of these same vectors is a linear combination and for short um, I may often write just using the summation notation oops let's call this not k but j and this goes from j equals 1 to k such that the sum of these coefficients is equal to 1. So it's basically a linear combination, but we have an additional constraint on the coefficients. So for example, when k equals 2, we have two vectors, let's say v1 and v2, then every such affine combination is of the form t v2 plus 1 minus t v1, where t is a real number. And you can look at what this says. Let's say these two vectors are different. Let's say v1 is here and v2 is here. Then at t equals 0, so this, right, this is describing the set of all such combinations. And when t equals 0, this gives me v1. So at t equals 0, I'm here. And when t equals 1, I'm at v2. And as you vary t over the set of real numbers, you get all the points along the straight line through v1 and v2. This is very different than the set of all linear combinations of v1 and v2. Because if, let's say, the zero vector were here, then v1 would be this corresponding vector, v2 would be this corresponding vector, and all linear combinations of these two vectors is actually the plane obtained from v1 and v2. That's what the span of these two vectors are. But all affine combinations is just this line. And so just like we can define the span of vectors, we can also define the affine span of vectors. So the affine span of the vectors v1 through vk is, and we denote it by AFF, and it's defined to be the set of all affine combinations. So the set of all lambda j, vj, such that all of the lambda j's are an R, and the sum of them equals 1. So let's look at um, another example where we take three vectors. So let's say v1, v2, v3. And let's just be concrete, and let's say we're in R3, so that we can visualize this a little bit better. 
So there are several cases that we can take. Just like for linear combinations, for instance, if one of these vectors was a linear combination of the other, then the span of this would be a plane. And if all of them are scalar multiples of each other, then the span is a line. And if they are all the zero vector, then we just get the zero vector. And if they're all linearly independent, then we get all of R3. There are many different cases depending on the relationships between V1 through V3. Same thing happens for affine span in the sense that it depends on how these vectors are related. So let's look at three possible cases. So case one, let's say V1, V2, and V3 are not collinear. So this means that all these three points don't lie on the same line. So maybe they look something like this. Like for instance, you can take the unit vectors E1, E2, and E3, and R3. Then the affine span of these three vectors is equal to the two-dimensional plane containing these vectors. And it's not so ob immediately obvious that that's what happens, but let's just think about this. If we take V1 and V2, then it includes the affine span of these two vectors, which means we have this line through these two vectors is in our affine span. And likewise, the line through V2 and V3 is here. Likewise, the line V1 through V3 is here. And now that we have all of these lines in here, we can also take affine combinations of these points. So you can take, for instance, the affine combination of this point with this point, which gives us this line, this point with this point, which gives us this line. And you can see by taking all such combinations, all such affine combinations of these three vectors, we can actually get any point in the plane that contains these three points. In case two, Let's imagine that V1, V2, V3 are collinear, but at least two are distinct. So in this case, so I'm assuming that at least two, so either the possibilities are something like they're all different, but they lie on the same line, in which case the affine span of these three points is equal to the straight line through those two points, uh, those three points. Or the other case is the affine span, if two of them happen to coincide, then we just have two points, but I'm assuming that they're collinear and at least two are distinct, so we also get the straight line through those two points. And the final case, case three, is when all those vectors are exactly the same vector. And when this happens, we only have a single point. And all affine combinations of a single point is just that point itself. So these are some of the basic constructions that you can do with vectors. Besides just taking linear combinations, you can also take affine combinations. There's yet another type, which we won't discuss, is if you require that the sum of these coefficients adds up to one, but they're also not just real numbers, but they're strictly non-negative. So they have to be at least zero. And that's called a convex combination, which is a closely related idea. And in the case of these three vectors, for instance, it would be the triangle whose three vertices are those three vectors that we had here. And in this case, if we took convex combinations, it would be the interval between these two farthest endpoints. And in this case, we would have the same situation as we had here, where we would just get a single point.